very much for coming out uh, today. I know if you didn't have the food, none of you would be here. So uh, there is no such thing as a free lunch because you do have to do a bit of work afterwards. Um, so we are very much um, open and welcome to ideas and suggestions as to how we can progress uh, the Tim Robinson Archive here at NUI Galway. So you're all very, very welcome indeed. Um, I have a new phone here that I have to swipe, so this is not me checking my Tinder account or anything. <laughs> I am actually going to be moving forward very, very quickly uh, here just to give an overview of, of Tim Robinson, who he was and what his work was and why his archive came to go away. So Tim Robinson, uh, he's uh, an English man who spent most of his working life uh, in the West of Ireland. Uh, he was born in Yorkshire in 1935 and he's currently living in London uh, with his wife Maraid uh, at the present time. Uh, he studied mathematics at Cambridge University uh, and then he spent a little bit of time after that then out in Malaysia. Uh, he returned to Europe and he took up life as kind of thinking about mathematics, art, philosophy and he became what we would now term as an environmental artist um, or an experimental artist in the late 1960s. Um, between the late 60s and early 1972, um, his work was uh, exhibited and he created work, exhibited work and lived and worked uh, in different countries including England, France, uh, Italy and Istanbul. Um, and then in 1972, for a series of different reasons, he arrived into the west of Ireland with his wife Maraid with a suitcase and they landed out onto Inish Moor, um, onto the Aran Islands, um, at which time he decided he was going to give up the vocabulary of art and on a different rock on the western part of the ocean. Uh, neither of them had the Irish language, neither of them had any connections to this part of the world, and it was Maraid's um, viewing of Man of Aran uh, that Tim hadn't actually seen the film, but Maraid had seen it and she said, Tim, why, why don't we go and move out here? So that's how they came to move to the Aran Islands. Um, when he was on Aran, uh, if, uh, a lady on the island said to him one day, she said, you're very good at drawing, aren't you, Tim? He said, I'm not too bad. She said, would you ever make a map of the island? Because a lot of tourists are coming and we don't have a map. Um, so he decided he would, with gusto, uh, engage with the project of mapping the island. And that's how the maps actually started. Um, he spent a long time walking the islands, gathering information, gathering uh, research, talking to local people, and of course, learning the Irish language as well. He was particularly fascinated by place names, and we'll come back to that later, maybe with Ashley's um, section of the talk as well. Um, so in the late 70s, early 80s, he started making and creating maps. Um, his first map was of the Aran Islands, then he made a map of, of the Burren, and then finally he made a map of Connemara. Um, and these would become known as the ABC of the Earth Wonders, A for Aran, B for Burren, and C for Connemara. And when his mapping projects finished, he then had this huge treasure trove of material and he decided, I need to write all of this up, and that's when he started writing the books around the same time as well. Um, his The Folding Landscapes uh, mapping project, so that was their publishing house. They had based out in Roundstone, uh, when they moved to Roundstone in 1984. Um, and it won, it was Ireland's winning entry for the Ford European Conservation Award in 1987. Um, he was elected to Ace Thon in 1996 and to the Royal Irish Academy in 2011. He was the Parnell Visiting Fellow at Magdalen College in Cambridge in 2011 as well. And the following year, he was a visiting artist at the uh, Centre Culturel Hollandais in, uh, in Paris as well. His paintings and constructions, as he would uh, name them, have been exhibited uh, in the Camden Art Gallery, the Serpentine Gallery, the Irish Museum of Modern Art, and the Cunin Gallery, amongst others. And he's won several Irish Book Awards, um, and most notably um, his translation uh, with. Um, Liam Mappanomera of Martin Times Cray McKenna has come out of the University Press uh, in the last year as well. Um, most of you might be familiar with his books, but just in case you're not, he's written Stones of Aaron, Pilgr Pilgrimage and Labyrinth, the Connemara Trilogy, which are three books based on Connemara, um, and a suite of essays called My Time and Space, and several other um, essay collections as well. And if you haven't encountered Tim's work, I highly recommend you to look at the essay collections because they're, they're very easy, they're very engaging, I would say they're very easy actually. The language isn't overly difficult, but it's a very interesting way to get engaged with the kinds of ideas that he's dealing with uh, in essay form, and then you can kind of tackle the larger books then. Um, people have begun to recognise the value of his work internationally as well, and a documentary film 
by Pat Collins uh, was produced in 2011 called Tim Robbins and Connemara. There's a copy here in the library of that as well. Um, and an in, uh, interdisciplinary essay collection was published with Manchester University Press uh, last year, edited by Christine Cusick and Derek Gladwin, called Unfolding Irish Landscapes, Tim Robinson, Culture and Environment. And we had the launch of that book here at the Moore Institute here um, last year, last spring actually as well. Um, there's also many articles by scholars published um, on Tim. Um, and uh, if anyone's interested, I have a full bibliography. I can send that on to anybody who's interested um, afterwards as well. Um, so just to give kind of an overview as to kind of these, this is the kind of work he was doing in the 1960s, late 60s. So you can see there's a monochrome element to it, and it's kind of interesting how that monochrome would kind of sweep over into his work um, on uh, mapping and also tracing, I suppose, the history and the legacy of, of the land and landscape of people of the west of Ireland. Um, and in many ways, what he's concerned about a geometry of place was, and it was about how people embed themselves in place in a very sophisticated mathematical way of what he was thinking in the 60s, becomes translated onto on-the-ground fieldwork uh, in the 80s, 90s and 2000s by his writing on, on Connemara and the, the West of Ireland. Um, up until the late 90s, he never drew a, an explicit connection between these two kinds of worlds that he had. Um, and in a book of view from the horizon, he wrote, the question became sharp for me recently as I approached the contemplation of the body of texts and maps I would have claimed to have been inspired by, by, by my encounter in the West of Ireland. Because in trying to foresee what I might do next, I mentally revisited that earlier time of change, uh, unwrapped some artwork stored away from my last year in London before the transition date of November 1972. That's the date when we arrived out in Aaron with a suitcase and raid. Um, I discovered in them a concentrated abstract of the suite of images that's controlled by subsequent writing and is implicit in my cartography. Um, and these are some of the, the, again, visual artworks that he was producing. And again, they're very much like surveyor's rods. Again, the black and white imagery is there. Um, so this kind of trope follows all the way throughout his work. It just takes on a different format, a different context, but the concerns are very much uh, similar. Um, my colleagues here will be talking more about the archive itself, um, but it was gifted in 2006 and in 2013 and 2014 the entirety of the archive was gifted to the university, um, a very generous request from the Robinsons to the people of the West of Ireland uh, in particular. Um, the itemisation of a large body of maps, 489, thousands and pages of correspondence, uh, many from the writers, Brian Creel, Edmund O'Brien, etc., uh, Seamus Heaney. Uh, over 24,000 uh, pages of manuscripts, first editions of his maps and books. Uh, he has his own library, has been uh, given to the university as well as a library in total of 300 Irish and English language reference books relating to the west of Ireland, many of which are out of print on our first edition, so they're very, very valuable as books in themselves. Um, a large amount of material related to his life and work in Vienna, Istanbul, London and Cambridge. Um, the place name index cards and then we have drawings, photographs and other fieldwork related material relating to his work in the Brown, Connemara and the Aran Islands as well. Um, so I'm just going to finish my section this morning uh, just by a comment of you have to have the map. Um, and this was a comment by Francis Whelan, a gentleman I've had the privilege of working with uh, in a community mapping group down at County Care in recent years. Um, and uh, we, I've been working with them since around 2012 uh, and they were involved in the Artists of the Archive project that we did here in Galway over the summer as well. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the final part of the presentation. Um, but Tim Robinson talked about what we might do with his archive um, in his article in 2003 published in Irish Pages. Um, and he writes, I try to ensure that copies of as many as possible of these lists of place names from Connemara and Aaron and the Burn come into my hands and are added to my archive, which will eventually go to NUI Galway. Now, maybe that some minor historical puzzles can be resolved through consulting such lists, or a scholar may use them to buttress pieces about land use or emigration or plant distribution. That is, the place names become grist to the academic mill. Artists and writers may pick and choose among them for their own creative purposes. So I'm just going to very quickly show you a brief clip um, and this is just one way in which Tim's work has had an impact on uh, the local community um, and how reading about Tim and his work has influenced their own mapping projects in Kilnaboy.
top of the order people in the community. That was the one, really. They had the story, you know. Yeah, and we brought them in here. They came in here and chatted with us many times. It was very good to have them on a map here, and they were able to follow and show that uh, where the house was and such a road, and you know, since and face, you have to have them. 